expertly controlled save. But Spartau score again. They're untouchable today. Yes, they are certainly putting on a show this evening. Only a three throw? That doesn't seem like Bad Schwartau. Seem well on the way to winning if things continue as they've done. The balance has been clear. So today I wanted to talk about something a little bit different from my usual coverage of all things Japan and Japanese games and talk about sports games which are predominantly developed by Western developers. Uh, I think something that a lot of people don't realize about me is I'm actually a really big fan of sports and sport games in general. And uh, I do actually end up playing a lot of the more niche ones as well because as an Australian we tend to like sports that um, aren't necessarily popular in America and because of that the developers of those games tend to be working on smaller budgets for smaller communities. And as a result of that, there's a lot of discussion that happens within, uh, I guess, critical circles as well as the community about the value that these games offer and uh, whether they should be full price games, for example, um, whether the expectation should be that they're up to the same standards as, say, a FIFA or an NFL or an NHL game or whatever. And uh, I thought I'd do a video on that topic because... As a fan of niche games, I certainly have some thoughts about it, and I think that uh, in a lot of cases, people don't really give them a fair run, or they go into these games with unreasonable expectations. So when you look at the likes of EA Sports, or 2K Games, or Sony with the baseball franchise, or even Konami, uh, there's a couple of things that you kind of register or recognize immediately with those sports games, and that is the production values of them. They are very well made games, of course. They have large teams working on them, they uh, have really high production values, they look great, the engines are expensive and able to run all kinds of physics models and AI routines and all of that kind of stuff. So you get a certain quality or a certain experience with those games um, that allows them to really closely emulate what you see when you watch the sport uh, on a broadcast. So that's obviously the intention of every sports game is to properly emulate the sport that it represents. But those things are actually very difficult to do, of course. And I feel like compared to pretty much every other genre out there, it is really difficult for a smaller developer to compete with the expectations that the likes of EA set. So people play a FIFA game uh, and people who are soccer or football fans really love those games, of course, and fans of other sports see them. And when those other sports have a game in development for the um, to, to represent their sport, they kind of expect that same thrill as playing a FIFA game, uh, as a football fan gets when they play a FIFA game. And of course that just can't happen. A niche sports game can't compete with the raw quality of a FIFA or NBA or MLB sports game. It just can't happen. And I often see people when they're talking about why that's the case chalk it up to the developer size it's always seems to be well this developer is a small developer therefore it can't compete with ea and all that kind of stuff so handball has you know 10 20 people i don't know how many people worked on handball but handball for instance had 20 people work on it you know ea has a thousand people working in nba ea sports therefore you know the game can't be as high quality i think the actual answer is a little bit more complex than that you could put a thousand people on handball and while the game would be of a much higher quality, it would be the only game before that developer went out of business and never made another handball game again. And obviously every developer needs to create a sustainable business model. Otherwise you can't have the improvement of sports games from one to the next. And while Handball 17 isn't a brilliant game, it is a step up from Handball 16 the year before. And the reason it is, is because the developer made enough money from Handball 16 to continue to work on it and make Handball 17. Hopefully we see it Handball 18. But you could put a thousand people on Handball and you would make the game really good quality. It would be as good as, you know, NBA. Let's say it is as good as NBA and, you know, the game's amazing and everybody who's a Handball fan who also happens to play video games absolutely loves it. That doesn't mean it's going to sell well enough to be a sustainable business model. So, um, you know, the, the, the reality is Handball is... It's a very popular sport in its own right, especially on, in mainland Europe, but also increasingly in the Middle East and uh, South Korea and other parts of Asia. It's a growing sport. It's a healthy sport. It's in the Olympics. You know, there's always interest in the sport every time an Olympics rolls around and the numbers are good as far as I'm aware. The audiences are good. The crowds are good. And it's a popular sport. But 
unfortunately for handball, the number of people who are playing video games who are also interested in playing a handball video game, the, the crossover is not there. FIFA and other, and basketball and ice hockey, those games have had many years, many, many years to develop an audience of people who play video games and who like the sport. Creating that from scratch takes a lot of investment and in marketing, promotion, and all of those kinds of things. And no small developer has the resources to do that neither does the actual sport itself a lot of sports grow because if they have the actual support of the the body the governing body of the sport fifa grows because it has the support of fifa the organizing body uh madden grows because it has the in involvement of the nfl uh, even if handball's organizing body was to become involved in handball uh, the video games or to, to really try to throw some resources behind it. It just would not have the resources to put behind it that these other uh, bodies have. And therefore, it doesn't really matter how good quality the game is. The market for it is still always going to be very limited or at best, if you hope to really grow it, it would be a solid 10, 15, 20 years of investment to get it to the point where it is a major sporting franchise in the video game world. And that is difficult no small developer has those resources no niche sporting body has those resources so you're never going to actually see that happen with these niche sports games they are always going to have to be made by smaller developers uh, working on sports that they're passionate about and while they can't necessarily recreate the quality of fifa or whatever they just have to give it their best damn shot darn shot and if they um you know if people if fans of the sport like it then limited as they are, you know, that's kind of a win. So it's always going to be a niche sport for a niche audience. And the reviews are always going to be less positive than FIFA or whatever. Um, but, you know, the, these are things that would fans of the sport kind of just have to accept. This is, this is part of being a fan of the sport. If you're a fan of handball, if you're a fan of lacrosse, if you're a fan of uh, cricket, whatever. If you're a fan of those sports, you're going to have to put aside the expectations that they're a FIFA quality and just enjoy what the developers are able to create with the resources that they have access to. And that brings us to the elephant in the room, I guess. The game's price, niche game's price. Because I see a lot of people talk about how these niche games are too expensive because they're not of the same standard as FIFA and yet they're being sold at the same price as FIFA. Um, and... <laughs> It's an argument that I see play out all the time. People are always saying this game should be half price because it's you know not as good as FIFA, and if it was at half price, you'd sell lots more copies. But that really doesn't under that doesn't show any understanding about how markets work. Firstly, for a niche product, if you cut the price in half, you don't necessarily sell twice as many copies because you're probably already finding your maximum audience at full price. I can give you an example. If Ferrari were to cut the price of its cars in half, it would not sell twice as many cars because its cars would still be expensive, but it would still sell, but it would only sell the cars that it does sell at half the price. It's cutting its margin and margins are not 50%. You don't make that much money over the cost of uh, creating a product. It's the same for sports games. You buy them digitally, there's still a lot of money that goes into the creation of them. So to suggest you can just cut the price in half so you can sell a couple more copies, it's bad business. It doesn't make any logical sense for the business to do that because it is already finding its maximum audience. And in fact, when you look at the kind of the big budget uh, sports blockbuster games, they are actually more expensive than the full priced uh, niche sports games. Because none of these niche sports games have DLC thrown into them. None of them have microtransactions and loot boxes and all that kind of stuff. But all the big budget sports games do. And the reason that they do that, even if you personally don't buy those microtransactions, somebody else is and they are subsidizing the cost of your game because the cost of the game itself that ea is producing in fifa or whatever is actually more than the cost that they're selling it to based on their kind of sales projections they are expecting to make a lot of money from the microtransactions the loot boxes and all that and that is sustaining the business model now that stuff actually takes a lot of development work in itself. You know, it's not just throw it into the game and it happens. So a big part of the EA development team is actually focused on making these systems work, making them worth the money so that people spend the money on them 
and then support su- su- excuse me and then supporting them after release as well whereas these games are all kind of sold at a single upfront price and left there the reason being firstly again the developers can't really afford to do this wrong if they do it wrong they lose their audience they lose this their audience because it's a niche audience they literally go down to nothing you know um they, they can't afford to put people off like that so because they can't afford to create the microtransaction environment to make it work properly they instead have to not do it at all basically uh, and they need to be able to make their money from the older kind of style of business model when it comes to video games and that's a single upfront cost and if they were to cut their the cost of their sports games in half then there's no other recourse to make further money from their audience that is just a, a single half price game whereas if a ea were to cut the cost of fifa in half as it does for sales and all that kind of stuff it's still going to make money afterwards because the microtransactions will still be there and perhaps 10 percent of people who buy the game at 50 dollars as opposed to 100 dollars then go and spend 20 or 30 dollars on uh, microtransactions so they're still making some good money back from that and the impact of the sale doesn't hurt them as much so yeah in conclusion sports games have niche sports games have it very difficult they have a limited audience a limited maximum audience it's an audience that they can't really increase by cutting the price therefore they need to keep the price at full price and hope that the audience enjoys the game enough that they continue to buy them and then they can continue to produce them and improve on them but those arguments that people keep making that these games should be lesser price or they should have or, or their inferior games because they're not as good as FIFA is really unfair to the developers because EA is not making a cricket game, for example. EA is not making a handball game. Only the niche developers are. And you've got to, you really do have a choice. Either you have that niche game, sports game, or you don't have that sports game. You're not going to convince EA to make one by sending the other developer out of business. So thanks very much for watching this video, and we will see you at the next one.